So I just recently did an optimization problem in a video on my channel, but I wanted to show you another example of an optimization problem, and this one specifically is interesting because it's worded a little bit weirdly. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna show you how to find the demand function based on a given problem, and then use that demand function to maximize revenue. But in this case specifically, we're gonna be talking about the type of optimization problem where they say there's a rebate the company is gonna offer and you have to figure out how much of a rebate they should give. And this actually came from one of my weekly live streams that I did recently. I've been doing a live stream every Monday night at five Pacific, eight Eastern. Be sure to join us on the next one, but let's go ahead and jump on into this problem. A manufacturer which has been selling a thousand television sets a week at $450 each. A market survey indicates that for each $10 rebate offered to the buyer, the number of sets sold will increase by 100 per week. So this is you know, a very similar situation we have to the last example that we just went over, but the wording is different, like I said. So instead of saying, like the last example, instead of saying, you know, here's how many things we're gonna sell at this price, if we change our price to this, here's how many things we're gonna sell. They word it a little bit differently. What they say is we're gonna offer a certain number of $10 rebates, which really a $10 rebate is just lowering the price by $10. So really what this is saying is that if we have a price of $450, so if our price is $450, we're gonna sell a thousand television sets. And similarly, if our, um, if we offer a $10 rebate, which just means lower the price by $10. So lower the price down to three, I'm sorry, not 300, $440. Lower the price by 10 gives us $440. We're going to sell an extra hundred sets per week. So we're going to sell instead of a thousand sets per week, we're going to sell 1100 sets per week because we've, we've increased the number we sell by a hundred. So basically it gives us these kind of two pieces of information. And of course we could figure out more if we wanted to. We could keep lowering our price by $10 and increasing the number of sets we sell by 100. Um, but this is really all the information we need because this tells us if we're gonna, each time we decrease the price by $10, we sell 100 more sets. That right there describes a linear function. So we know that we have a linear demand function because each time we lower the price by the same number, we sell the same number more TVs. It's linear because of that. So what that means is we can do the exact same process we did in the last example, in, in the last portion of this video here, which means we can think of these as points where we have, instead of thinking of $450 leads to a thousand, we just have 450 and a thousand as our input and output, and then 440 and 1100 as our input and output. So we have these two points, which lie on our demand function, because again, a demand function is always gonna output quantity. It's gonna tell us the number of things we're gonna sell, and it's always gonna be a function of the price of that object. So the price is our input, the output is the number of things we sell. The output is quantity, the input is price. So again, we can use the same method, which is to find the slope of this demand function, which since we know it's linear, it's just going to be the slope, which is M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which is just going to be our second Y value, 1100, minus our first Y value of 1000 over our second X value of 440 minus our first X value of 450 which is gonna be 1100 minus 1000 is 100, and then 440 minus 450 is negative 10. So our slope is gonna be negative 10 because it's just 100 divided by 10 is 10. So now what we can do is we can then use the point slope form of a line. So we have y minus y0 equals m times x minus x0. This is just the point slope form of a line. But what I'm gonna do actually is instead of putting this as Y's and X's, let's put it as P's and Q's because P and Q is gonna be typically the kind of uh, variable 
names that we want to use in this because we want it to be a function of price and output quantity. So instead of our output being Y, we're going to have Q. So it's going to be Q minus Q zero. And then P minus P zero is going to be our input because P is going to be price. So we're going to have basically Q minus some specific quantity that would be sold that we, you know, in other words, a point that lies on this line equals the slope, which we just found to be negative 10 times P minus, you know, a P, a price that lies on one of these points. Again, just a point that lies on this line. So the Q and the P is always going to remain the same. The P zero and the Q zero is just going to be the price and quantity of one of the points on this line. It doesn't matter which one we choose. We can choose either 450 and a thousand or we can choose 440 and 1100 let's just go with our first point here so we'll use uh, a thousand as our quantity and 450 as our price and then we can basically just simplify this line equation we have here so we'll keep q minus a thousand over here for now distribute our negative 10 giving us negative 10 p negative 10 times negative 450 gives us plus 4500 and then Add a thousand to both sides, giving us Q equals negative 10 P plus 5,500. Then this is really it for our demand function because we know that we have a function that has an input of price, whatever the price of our TV is, is going to be the input and it's going to output the number of TVs we sell. But remember, we're not done there. That's just part A. Part A is just to find the demand function. Now what we need to do is use this demand function in order to figure out how large of a rebate this company should offer in order to maximize the revenue. So again, we're going to reuse this demand function here. So let me just copy this down here. And what we want to figure out is the maximum revenue or you know what what rebate we should offer in order to maximize revenue well in order to figure that out what we need to figure out is what price we should put the televisions at to maximize revenue which means really long story short we're trying to maximize revenue we need to get our maximize our revenue as big as possible so to do that we need to first figure out what our revenue equation is so that we can then maximize that equation to figure out our revenue equation, what you want to keep in mind is that revenue is always price times quantity. In general, the amount of revenue you get is just going to be the price per item that you're selling times the number of items you sell. That's just going to be the total amount of money that you have coming in. Well, since we already know, again, an equation for our, the quantity of TVs we're going to sell dependent on price, what we can do is take this equation for the quantity of TVs plug it in for the quantity here. And what that's going to give us is an equation, which is only dependent on one variable. That's really the important piece here for our revenue. So now we have this equation just in terms of price, right? It just has this one single variable. And the reason why that's nice is we know how to maximize a function or figure out where it is a maximum when it only has one variable. All we need to do is, you know, take the derivative of that function and set it equal to zero and solve for that one single variable. And that should be where the critical numbers are. So to do that, we just need to take the derivative of this function. Well, again, to kind of simplify this function before taking its derivative, we could definitely take the derivative as is, but we'd have to use product rule. So it might be easier instead to distribute this P into the parentheses here, giving us negative 10 P squared plus 5,500 P because now we can take the derivative of this function just using the power rule. So we bring our two down in front, giving us negative 20 P, lower our power by one, which just gives us P to the one, which is just P. And then plus the derivative of 5,500 P is 5,500. Okay, so now to figure out where our revenue is as big as possible, we need to take this revenue equation or I'm sorry, the derivative of our revenue and set it equal to zero. So we'll just get zero equals negative 20 P plus 5,500. That was a very sloppy five, sorry. 5,500 equals zero. 
and solve for P. So we minus our 5,500 over. And then divide by negative 20, giving us P equals 55, 550 over 2, which is 225. So basically, and this is not our final answer yet, there is a little bit more we have to do here, so be careful. Because what we just found was the price that will maximize our revenue. But remember, that's not what our question asks us to find. The question asks us to find, if we go back up here, how large of a rebate should the company offer in order to maximize the revenue? So what we figured out is we want our televisions to be priced at 250 or $225. That is our optimal price to maximize our revenue. But going back to the original problem up here, they said what they did was they started with a price of $450 and they started adding on $10 rebates, basically giving discounts from that $450. So what we want to think about actually, not what price we want to put our televisions, but if we start at $450, how, how much of a rebate do we have to give in order to get down to our optimal price of 225? So basically what we're trying to do is solve this equation, which essentially just means, uh, you know, minus the 450 over, um, which would be what, two, 220, no, that's not 225. Um, 125. 550 divided by two up here is not 225, it's 275. So let me adjust that there. So the optimal price is 275. So what we need to do here is figure out how many rebates we need to get to get our price down to 275, which would actually be uh, 275 minus 450 here would be x equals negative 175, which means x equals positive 175. So basically we need to give $175 worth of rebates in order to, uh, you know, get to the point where we're going to maximize our revenue. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below. That's a huge help to me so I can keep making more videos like this and keep helping you on your journey through calculus. Like I said, this, this video clip came from one of my weekly live streams. I'm gonna be doing a weekly live stream every Monday night, five Pacific, eight Eastern. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below and turn on all notifications so that you're notified when I'm going live each week. Hope to see you there.